Greetings, humans. Welcome to the Roseanne Barr podcast. It's a serious one today, uh, and we'll get into it about Israel and all of that stuff. But I just want to first say that I'm feeling so much better in the last two weeks since I started using Field of Greens. You know, the CDC recommends that you eat six cups of fruits and vegetables a day. Well, I don't have time or the desire to eat six fruits of cups and vegetables a day. And I do feel a lot better. Like I'm walking on the beach and I'm doing all these things and uh, you have a lot more energy and it helps your skin and your hair and your nails too. So it's all like really good. It's like a quick fix, a healthy quick fix to help you stay healthy. It's a really great product and I'm proud to be able to represent them for something that really works. Yeah, Hmm? and you're also been on tour in Florida. So this is like our fourth. Oh yeah. I'm on tour too, which is, you know, for anybody who's ever been on tour knows it's completely physically and mentally taxing to go from city to city and perform, especially at my age, 70. So it's just a godsend. It's a, it's a wonderful uh, way to build up resistance to all the stress and stuff that you feel when you're working hard. It's it's amazing. I've noticed the difference. I mean, I've been with you my whole life and I can see your energy levels are better and and you've been kicking ass. And we do have two more shows coming up. Uh, these are your last two potential stand up acts ever. I don't want to give anything away, but you are floating the idea of retirement. So if that is if that does come true, these two shows. Well, I don't know. If I keep drinking this field of green stuff. I'll <laughs> tell you, maybe I'll keep going. Maybe. I, I feel renewed energy. Like, you know, I don't feel so tired and, uh, you know, it's really good. I've never in my life eaten six cups of fruit and vegetables a day as recommended. You probably you know, haven't I, eaten six cups of fruit and vegetables in your entire lifetime. Uh, oh, you see. My is they specifically target the fruits and vegetables that are, uh, you know, very important in liver health, heart health, and all those kind of things. That is what's cool about it. Yeah, they actually have like real scientists working on it instead of just pull. And it's not just some kid in a garage with a blender. They they actually pick the proper fruits and vegetables and pulverized in combination specific to those things for your body, which were things that you needed to work on, to be real. You know, I like it when I can support something that's real and healthy for people instead of, you know, you know, that's what's really cool about having your own podcast and your own voice that you actually believe in the stuff you're selling and you're not just, you know, doing it for money, but you're doing it because it actually works. And this works so well that it comes with a money back guarantee if it doesn't, right? Right. You should talk about that. You can return it for a full refund if you don't feel mm-hmm. better, which is pretty crazy. No, but that's really cool because if you go to your doctor and you don't hear from your doctor, whatever you're doing, keep doing because it's really working for you, then ask for your money back and you'll get it. Yeah, full refund. You should see an actual health benefit coming. Absolutely. And uh, make sure to mention, Ma, that because you like this product so much, you actually have signed on to give a discount code to your phone. Yes. That's right. Don't you get 15% off um, yeah. of your first order? And then yes. you get what 10% off when you subscribe for recurring orders. Yeah. So visit fieldofgreens.com and use promo code RB. That's fieldofgreens.com promo code RB for 15% off your first order and then 10% off subsequent orders. Yeah. And you will feel better how you react to it and if you too feel better like i do i i think uh you know we always joke but people do talk about how you're hotter than madonna which i think is a low bar now i think you're hotter than most people out there at any age and i think that there's some uh we should attribute some to fill the greens all right let's bring on our guest and now our guest uh ami horowitz I'm, you, I'm i'm you know nervous and uh kind of in shock in ptsd trauma uh you know having that flare up again how are you uh i'm i'm great although i similar look it's um it's a very you know who 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 could have 
thought or predicted that we would find ourselves in the situation that we are now. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's almost beyond comprehension. It's almost, it's very difficult to even like think something like this could have happened. <laughs> oh, we're, are we talking about the same thing? I, I'm assuming we're talking about Israel, but we're talking about something else. I don't know. No. Yeah. What are you laughing at, Jake? Because he's being sarcastic. Obviously, this was going to happen. They they gave Iran billions of dollars. Well, you know we've no we've, no 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 oh no 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 Jake, I'm not being sarcastic. Not being sarcastic. No. Not at all. Um, no, look. First of all, I'll tell you. Okay, a couple things. One is um, capability. Did did they? I am shocked that they had the capability to do this. Right. It's 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 the ability to to, to get over one of the most fortified places in the Middle East, if not the world, supposedly, right? With the greatest right. high tech in the world, with, right. with, with the country of Israel that has infiltrated every level of Hamas leadership with, with, with intelligence and, and our signet and our human intelligence. And all of that combined, no, in a million years, I remember somebody sent me the video early on and said, here's a video of Hamas people rampaging in the streets of Israel. I literally told this person, I go, this is fake. This can't be real. No, no, I, this is totally shocking. And then moreover, and this may make me sound stupid. I don't care. I'm just going to be honest. I spent time with Hamas. I was undercover with Hamas for a couple of weeks. I got to know a lot of their leadership and their lay people. And I got to tell you, look, obviously I knew these are bloodthirsty animals who have killed uh, hundreds of Jews in cold, civilians in cold blood. I well, gotta be honest. Add, let's add that they have killed thousands of Palestinians in cold uh, blood. Absolutely. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, but if you asked me, do I think they had the capability, um, the, the barbarity to separate the heads of babies from their bodies? I would have said no. If you asked me, do, do they have it in them to rape Holocaust survivors? Honestly, I would have said no. Um, I, I didn't think they had it in them. I really, well, really, okay, really didn't. Okay, number one, what you said about the infrastructure and the information, you know, the warning signs, didn't that happen here on 9-11? America also having the, that technology that failed. Yeah, and but I think so I, I always compare because it's not just Israel that is the target; it's also the United States. Correct. That's a great point. Yeah. Oh, at the end of the day, um, it's not a, Israel's the canary in the coal mine, right? Yeah. Israel right. happens to be. This is not a battle against um, uh, Judaism. It's a battle against Western ideals and modernity. That's what they hate. Israel just happens to be in an area very close to where these crazy people are. Okay. Um, it's not about a piece of land. It really isn't. Um, it's about the extermination of a way of life that they find offensive. That's what it really is. And, you know, there, there's a reason why um, Iran always chanted over the years since the revolution um, Israel, small Satan, U.S., big Satan, right? That's what we go. Yep. And if you ask, and I spent a lot of time with, with uh, Hamas supporters, Palestinian supporters, and I always ask them, okay, you hate, they talk about how much they hate Israel and Zionism. And then I say, well, what do you think about the U.S.? I have never in my entire life of the hundreds of people I have interviewed, have I ever heard an anti-Israel and Semitic piece of shit Say to me, oh, but I love America. Not once, not once. They hate America just as much as they hate Israel. And we have to understand that this is a clash of cultures, a battle of ideologies. It's a zero sum game, Roseanne. They win yeah. or we lose and we lose or we win and they lose. They don't want accommodation. These guys do not want accommodation. No, they don't. Well, it's the Nazi world order. The NWO, that's what it is. It's the Fourth Reich. That's how I perceive it. And, uh, you know. Not NWA. Also, NW is different, huh? right? Right. What? Not NWA. NWO. No, NWO. 
everybody says New World Order, but it's Nazi World Order, Fourth Reich. Because, you know, they didn't lose the war. They came to America and they infiltrated our government and they infiltrated our secret service. And, you know, people who don't know that, which is 99% of Americans, should learn about it. It's easy to learn about it by just studying Operation Paperclip. Start there. Inform yourselves. Because I think people should know why they're about to die. Don't you? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you talk about. Do you think Americans are going to start to die? I mean, you don't. You're not talking about. Uh, like you don't think America is going to put troops on the ground, do you? Well, uh, supposedly Biden said he's going to put two thousand Americans over there to fight. In look, it is so huge. It's so huge that we can't even use the words they want us to use because you know their words mean nothing. But they want us to use those words that mean nothing but death. Um, and, and it's hard for me to even use those words because like, just take for example, all these people, Americans, you know, I'm talking about the leftist Americans, American born leftist, college educated, supposedly, or miseducated is a better word, but, uh, you know, everything they back is a m backfire. You know what I mean? When they yep. go in yep. to back a union, the union is destroyed. Now, when they go, every time they go in and they're always on the wrong side of everything, they're always on the most violent. They say that they uh, are for the oppressed, but they go to the most violent, not, not the most oppressed, they're just the most violent. And what they do is destroy every uh, liberal democracy. So it's obviously call and tell pro everything they do. I'm talking about Antifa, B, uh, BLM, all of them, the Democrat Party itself. Today. It's always call and tell pro. They are trying to destroy Israel because it is a liberal democracy and they prefer Sharia law or a military takeover and a lockdown like Stalinism. That's what they like. That's what they back and what they work for. They hate liberal democracies, which is so crazy because that's the only place they're allowed to survive. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously COINTELPRO, lemming programming. Well, there, there's they, nothing. Sorry, Roseanne. I, I, I was finished. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, there's nothing liberal about the left. Okay, let's make that very clear. Um, right. The, the, these are people who have fascist tendencies if they're not fascist completely. Um, you know, that's the irony in the names of like Antifa, right? They are the fascists. And right. no, they, they have zero that's, interest. That's the misuse of language that so upsets me because it's beyond Orwellian doublespeak. It's a complete reversal. So when they say fidelity and trust, like these fucking banks do, that means they're going to rob you. Mm -hmm. So you just have to learn the keys to translation. You know, when they say freedom, they mean slavery. Mm -hmm. You know, you just have to know how to reverse, reverse it. Because it's the left is all, the left has always been very, very good in changing language. Um, mm -hmm. It's what they're known for. I mean, just yeah. just look at the Soviet Union and the way they right. were able to change language. Look, the the main. Yeah, this says it all. The main Soviet paper was called Prada, means truth, right? I mean, there's, it was nothing truthful about Prada that was ever printed in it. Maybe the weather, maybe. I'm not even sure about that. Um, that's the that's the modus operandi of the left. Change. Yeah, and that's why I know that Nazism comes in and look. it, it looks like a freedom uh, thing. Mm -hmm. It comes in as left, and the left always is fascist and right, like Mussolini. The left is always starts out looking like it's not what it is. That's why in on over Auschwitz, the gate says work makes free. That means because you're going to die as a slave, and then mm -hmm. you're you'll be free because you'll be dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, there's there's no question. It is there's, the there's... left. It is the left who works for the right. The right pays the left to lie to keep people from actually organizing and doing something about their plight. 
There, there, I mean, I've always looked at um, po the political spectrum as, as not a line, actually. The political spectrum is more of a circle. It and is, absolutely. You, and it's, it's amazing to me that when you go to one extreme on the left and the other extreme on the right, the two meet. And actually, yeah. the truth is, you can actually even see it now. So you can see it now. That was a lot. A lot of it was the last 50 years. It was mostly theoretical. Um, because we didn't really have the hard left and the hard right in this country like we do today. Um, and now you can really see they use the same language. They have the same goals. Um, yeah, they both are Jew haters. Yeah, and they, so one thing you know, agree all on. their agreement is in that. Is oh, in it's that more than that. But yes. Oh, it's, a, it's amazing. When you ask anti-Semites, and I have, I've spent time with anti-Semites on the left and the anti-Semites on the right. And I ask them, why do you hate Jews? Their answers are mirrors of each other. <laughs> it's amazing. It's the exact same language. Wow. Oh, Jewish control, Jewish. It's the same word, same language. It's incredible. It really, really is. And it's it's painful because that's, look, we are in a, in a part of, of our time now where we are seeing more extremes. Um, and that is a danger, not just to our world, but I mean, not to our country, but, but to our world. Um, look, Hitler, I know the left doesn't like to hear this. They like to call Hitler a, a rightist, but that's not, Hitler had a lot of things about him that were hard right, but he had, man, he was as hard left as hard right. He actually yeah, he embodied was, he was hard left. Left. Yes. The, you know, the National Socialist Party, it's not, not just a name he picked from a hat. He was the head of the, of the workers union when he was yeah. in his twenties. He was a hard communist, right? And a lot of his policies were about taking over um, uh, nationalizing industry. Look, right. the man was no question part of the right, but he was equally, if not more, part of the left. He embodies- Well, they're that, all that the same thing. thing. It's the UNA, it's the uni party. And it's like, you know, there's only one bird and it has a right wing and a left wing. It's one bird, you know? So that's what people have to- realize and it's a bird of prey and we're we're the prey i've never heard um, that announced before did you make that up that's pretty good yeah well i i didn't make up the bird part but i just made up the prey bird of prey and we're the prey but i know that we are the prey and we we are the collateral damage they trade in that bird you know can i ask a question to ami um when you were talking about how you never thought Hamas could breach the Iron Dome and all this stuff going on, um, there's a lot of theories online I wanted to use today. I, I know we're going to talk about a lot of things, but I'd like to either dispel or maybe add to the theories bouncing around. A lot of theories are surrounded because the Internet, you know how it goes, that this potentially could have been an inside job by the Israeli government or Iran funded the hacking of Israeli systems. There's a lot going on. Do you have a theory yeah, so many theories. how they did it? Well, can we discuss a few? Just people sure. watching this, you know, they just read online and go, oh, it's the Jews or whatever. Like, so, I mean, what do you the, think, how do you think they did it? The former is false. The latter is true. Yes. I mean, it's 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 ludicrous to think that this was a false flag operator. Or this was a, a, a I mean, it's, 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 it's insane to think that Israel was involved in this. Um, I mean, this this government's going to fall because of it. this government's toast. Uh, mm -hmm. Now it's toast. I mean, you you can't yeah. survive this happening under your watch. Um, and he should be, right? Okay. And I, I've 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 been a fan of 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 BBs for years. He should be gone. This is something you can't walk back. Um, no, he should be gone. Uh, Iran. Uh, this is look a hundred. There's no question. Iran has their fingerprints all over this. No question. Um, the, the Iran has a very sophisticated hacker network. Um, I which, think that's what happened. Yeah, well, let's it's an excellent hacker that. network. And and the, they they fund they fund Hamas to the tune of a hundred million dollars a year. They've been preparing for this for years, for years, of course. Of well, course. that's why I laughed yeah. early on when you said who could see this coming because my mom got fired basically for calling out the Iran deal that happened under Obama. Biden did a hostage trade where it was equal amount of hostages and then he gave iran an additional six billion dollars so i mean they've been planning this for two years yeah. from what I, 
from what we can see. And well, Iran I saw they were planning it when I sent my tweet out in 2017. I said, yeah. you know, the Obama administration, which, you know, is still in office. Let's remember that. I said, uh, and I think they they stole the election for this purpose to, to continue his, um, you know, he thinks that, you know, he thinks he's a prophet and a, uh, he thinks he's the savior of Islam. That's his mentality. And uh, so he has to finish this Iran thing. And it is the existential threat to Israel. And I saw it in 2017. And that's what my tweet was about. I miss, uh, I racially misgendered Valerie Jarrett. But I know, thought the bitch was white. I thought the bitch was white. And uh, if, if you, like, that's if, one of my favorite co- favorite quotes of all time. <laughs> I, have, I have t-shirts. I'll send you one. Yeah, we have t-shirts that say it. But if everybody would read my tweet with that in mind, me thinking that she was a, a an Iranian, you know, a white woman from Iran, which is what you know it says on on. But anyway, that's what I thought. You know, she you looked know what's so funny about but that. If they would read my tweet in that way they'd see that I predicted what just happened in Israel. And well, uh, of course, I was I'm, sure, I'm sure you have no recollection of this, Roseanne, but when, it, when, this, when this controversy broke out, I was in Beirut. I was actually undercover with the Muslim Brotherhood, which is oh funny. My God. And I actually texted you. We texted back and forth once or twice. I said, I'm so sorry. What's going on with you? And I just went, and you said, thank you. And you obviously, you, you, know, you, were a bit, you were a little too busy to go on beyond that. But I, yeah, when that happened, I was in my hotel room in Beirut. And I was like, oh, oh my God. Holy crap. Um, all right. So I'll, let me, I'm going to, you guys are. Did you, did you like it? The tweet or my Muslim Brotherhood uh, uh, meetings? Well, you were in a, you were in a precarious position, but I, oh, I it pretty much said that, you know, that deal would unleash that movie in Israel. And that's what it did. It sure did. It sure did. But I, let me say this. You guys are both sitting. You're both yes. sitting. Make sure you're sitting. So I don't want you to fall over. I don't know this. Okay, good. Look, I if any, anybody who knows me, who's followed me on, on, on TV or my, my videos knows that I am a rabid critic of Joe Biden. You said it, by the way, very right. Joe, if you look at who Joe Biden has administration, it is chock full of Obama people who, by the way, the, you know, a report was made that there's a reason why Obama still lives in Washington, D.C. These guys revolve through his townhouse keeping him informed what's going on. You know, I would not be surprised if he's pulling a lot of the strings when it comes to the Biden administration. I think Biden's all. one of the, Maybe, maybe all, I don't know. But he's been he's one of the most seen, damaging. He's seen Obama. I don't, I'm not, yeah, you may, I don't think you're wrong. Uh, he's been one of the most damaging presidents for a country we have ever had. I have been a vociferous, vociferous critic of Biden. I mean, look, I have a hard time understanding what he's actually saying. So I think I don't like what he's saying, but I can't really tell because I don't know what he's saying. But um, I will say this, at least thus far, everything he has said on Israel has been 100% strong and correct. He has not wavered, not gone wobbly, not said, to, at least not publicly, hey guys, let's back off a little bit. Thus far, I'm not saying that will continue going forward. I'm just saying thus far, I actually was have, have been very, very happy with Joe Biden on where he has stood with Israel steadfastly stood with Israel so far. Mm-hmm. And I'm, and I'm shocked. I, I, words. You're saying the things he says. Yeah. Publicly. Saying, they yeah. Sound yeah, look, I, I don't think he, look, as far as I know from the context that I have, he has not put pressure on Israel to pull back privately. Um, I think putting in, uh, putting in an aircraft carrier certainly is more than just words. Um, uh, again, I, this is just from what I understand both publicly and, and the small things I understand privately. Mm-hmm. These things may change, right? These things may change. Look, I, he when this when when this hospital uh, supposed and I, I think the hospital was bombed, although we're not hundreds. No, now people. they say it was the parking lot behind the hospital. Yeah, yeah, but let's, let's just say it was the hospital itself, right? I mean, I think that uh, far Obama, less Obama dead. was. Pre- I'm sorry. Far less dead. Than yeah, was yeah it wasn't really. level. It seems, but it, it if not. Obama was president. I think you would have had Obama come out without even looking at the intelligence attacking Israel for this. Yeah. And, yes. and, and Biden did not do that. Biden, in fact, said, 
We looked into it. Our intelligence says Israel is not involved, even though the pieces of shit in his party, right? The, 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 the pieces of crap like Ilhan Omar and Ashia Tlaib immediately, and this is the kind of tweets and words that lead to Jews dying. Well, they put no look, they didn't look even one iota into what actually happened and just tweeted out, look at what Israel is doing, killing Arabs, right? Um, so look, I'll just say this thus far, not unhappy with, with Biden and this and, and, and Israel. Yeah. I am. I, I hate that he went over there and he said it was the other team. It was the other team, he says to Netanyahu. Uh, I looked into it and, you know, it was the other team. Like it's it was a little weird. Game. Yeah, That's yeah. he's he's never been good. Language. He's not a, exactly a linguist, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but he did. I did see reports that he was downplays it all. And then some people say he's over there. Uh, what he's doing while he's over there saying the right words is that he just gave a hundred million to the government of uh, Gaza, which is Hamas. Yeah, I don't think he, I don't know, look, I could be wrong. I could have not have updated information. I don't know. I don't think he's given them aid yet, but that would be a problem. Look, I understand. Yeah, the world, okay, look, I understand why the world says, well, what's the problem with giving aid to Hamas, right? Or giving aid to the Palestinians. They need aid. They're in trouble. Give them aid. I get that, 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 that impulse. But what people have to understand is your, the aid, it's just like, look, Israel has been, Israel also has been funding Hamas. Let's not, let's not forget that. Israel has been giving money and aid to the Palestinians. And but it never Israel, gets to the people, just like the Clinton Foundation, it never gets to, what? The, no, 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 But no, but what Hamas does, it was just exposed was, the reason there's no water is because they dug up the water pipes to put them in their terror structure. You know, that's, that's right. why don't get water but we don't get to hear that because this is really an information war um mm -hmm. it is a huge information war and not to mention uh, by the way people don't realize gaza sits on a huge aquifer mm -hmm. but they don't they can't tap into it because they use all the infrastructure that israel has provided them for their right. terror net infrastructure yes they're sitting, on water. they're sitting on huge amounts of water they just don't have the ability to dig into it because all of their pipes and and infrastructure has been used for terror right and and then it just sickens me that they pretend that they care about the children there well they don't and then the only schools are un schools where they train to be soldiers which is a war crime the un you know, funds war crimes, but you know, against Palestinian children by training them to be soldiers in the first grade, you know, which I don't think we're far off from doing here in the United States where we're training to be the children to be soldiers for uh, sexual identity. It's just fucked. Look, I, I did a movie on the UN. Uh, I spent a lot of time at UN schools in Gaza and the Palestinian territories. And I'm, and, and, Okay, so you have the textbooks which vilify Jews, right? Mm -hmm. Which leads to when you when you look at somebody as something less than, and you call them cockroaches and vermin. Yeah, of course. Um, and apes and pigs. That's apes big. and pigs. Yeah, of course. Just like we slaughter pigs, of course they're gonna uh, rip the head off a baby. What was the matter to them? They're not human, anyways. It's that kind of those kind of words, that kind of thought and teaching, which directly led hey, to what we saw. Man. So America funds the UN, which funds hate speech. No, nope, I mean, nope. let's just get rid of all the bullshit and the double nope. standards. Because the left, if it wasn't for double standards, the fucking left would have no standards whatsoever. <laughs> Look, I, I went to these schools and they have murals, murals of suicide bombers on mm -hmm. schools that we pay for. People right. who have blown up schools and buses. It's well, I sick. do care for the Palestinian children, and I, I really do, and I pray for them too because they are just nothing but human cannon fodder uh, by their own leaders, and so are all the children of every other country, I guess, really, when you look at it. And it just sickens me because that is a satanic world that I don't know how much longer God is going to let that go or let it exist. It can't. It just can't. 
I don't know if you're a religious Jew. Are you, Ami? Um, I've, I've got some uh, some religious religion in my bones. Well, good for you. That's good. It's a good thing to hold on to, that God stuff. You know, if you want to see the difference between one side and the other side, I, I went to the, um, the rally at Columbia uh, University. Um, I... Pro Hamas rally, and I did a video Ooh. there, and I interviewed people. And let me let me explain the difference between uh, Israel and the Palestinians. You know, when I went, there's there were two rallies. There was the uh, Hamas Pro Hamas rally uh, that was that was the one that was scheduled, and then there was a counter pro Israel protest, literally twenty yards away, right right next to in the middle. Of, if you know Columbia, you have a you yeah. have a huge quad in the middle of the school. It's an urban campus, yeah. pretty small. And on that on that quad, they divided in the middle. Half were pro Palestinian, half were pro Israel. And when I went and I was listening to the pro Palestinian, pro Hamas uh, rally, all they used were words of violence. Yeah, violence was their theme, mm -hmm. over and over again. From it's the river deep. to the sea. From the river to the sea. Do you know what that means? From the river yeah, to the it sea. Means no, you do it. Right. Let me, yeah, let it me, those, those are words of genocide, correct. That Wait means from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, guess what's in between those two geographic points? The Jewish state. And, and when, when in 1948, when, when the Arabs were using the words, let's throw the Jews into the sea, guess what, Roseanne? Nothing's changed. These kids at Columbia and all over the country are using the same exact language. Let's throw the Jews into the sea. And then when I but walk I mean, over, Something has changed. I need to say it. Something has changed. Uh, you know, we're living in a unified field of bullshit as far as our uh, the news we receive. But here's the one thing very censored. Since 1968, there has been a Nakba of Jews from every Arab state. Uh, uh, one million Jews were expelled from every Arab state, and they had lived there for generations, for centuries. And they were expelled and all their wealth confiscated by those states, and they went to Israel. So those places are now Judenrein, which is you know the Fourth Reich, Nazi world order, so they're all Arab states are Jewish line. And so, you know, they did from they did pack every Jew in to that little space. And when they say from the river to the sea, they mean a huge sweep of the entire Arab world being Judah line. That's what they're rooting for. They are. And you know, so it's so by the way, I love I love I love that you use the word Nakba, turn that around on those A. But it was a Nakba. It, it, it was, was a Nakba a a from every Arab state. What but is a Nakba? It, it, means, it means catastrophe. It was okay. the word that if you listen to, uh, so when, when Israel, were, you, when Israel uh, celebrates its day of independence, right? Um, what do the, uh, the Arabs celebrate Nakba? That was their, it was called catastrophe. Gotcha. Um, oftentimes if, I, if I'm, if I'm making myself some toast and I drop it on the ground, I go, ah, Nakba. So, but you're <laughs> right. Um, and let me explain the difference between Israel and the Arab world. Because what happened was when the Jews were all expelled from all the Arab world, they didn't leave voluntarily. They had good lives yeah. in Iran. And this was after the Holocaust. In after Iraq, the Holocaust. In Egypt. Correct. They lived great lives. They didn't want to leave. They were expelled. Guess what happened to those Jews? Did they live in refugee camps outside of Israel? No. Israel took in every single one of those Jews and brought them in to the state of Israel to become members, Israelis of the Jewish state. And what happened to the Arabs who, who, were both, who left voluntarily and in some cases were thrown out during a war? Because that's what happens during a war. None of them were taken into Arab states. They all, from 1948 until today, live in refugee camps along the border of Jordan and along the border of Lebanon. They've never been brought and, 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 and incorporated into the Arab world. The Arabs didn't want anything to do with them. They kept them they living. They said Egypt and Jordan just said they're not going to take any people from Gaza. Because the last time they did, they tried to overthrow their king. I don't blame them. Yeah. I don't blame them. No, they're aware. Okay, what you, would you want to take in uh, Hamas people into your country? I wouldn't. No. Well, you know, that means they're going to force them. They're going to bring them here, I think. 
because they there's a lot of Jews here and they don't like that. So we'll see. That's what I think. Oh, there's a, there's a big push to bring them in for sure. Uh, yeah. I'm just saying this. Look, I I uh, I definitely can understand humanity. I have empathy. Okay, I've, I'm I have empathy for the plight that they're going to. Some a lot of it's not their fault. I get it. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, do I want to bring? At the end of the day, are are, are these people anti-Semitic? The answer is yes. Okay, let's let's be honest. The vast majority, every study done, the vast majority of Palestinians are anti-Semitic. I know that. I've spent time with them, so I know that anecdotally, and the data shows it. I'm just saying, I'm not sure at a time where anti-Semitism is going through the roof, I need to import more anti-Semites. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You know, America itself seems to be turning more and more anti-Semitic too. So I don't know. Maybe you, I don't know. Maybe people will get what they want. Maybe people will get what they ask for. Uh, maybe they do, you know, you if you even watch videos and read what's under them, it's Jew, the Jew, the Jew, the Jew. And, you know, uh, we have to talk about why there are so many Jews in the in the window, you know, for the window dressing. Uh, why are there so many Jews that are in the uh, in the uh, window? Why are they being used like that? You know what I mean? Yeah, you really yeah. have to talk about that too. Look, but we won't do that today. I'm just saying, you know, it's all the same people. It's all the same hands that it's always been. It's very biblical, actually. I, I'm seeing it in that way. It's the same fight it's always been. They don't like... Uh, I think that a lot of it is, you know, they really despise women's rights, honestly. They hate mm -hmm. that. Well, they hate, they hate women. Yeah. yeah. You know, women's rights, they, they, they hate women. You know, I did, I did a video um, that actually all that, but did about, about a year ago, came out about a year ago, and oddly enough, in the last last couple of days, it's picked up another couple million views just in the last day. Actually, Deborah Messing, oddly enough, just re, just re, just uh, reposted this video, and it wow, talked about good. yeah. So it's so weird. Weird. Um, good, for, good for her. But the, so the video was on. Um, it was it, the the plight of the LGBTQ in the Palestinian territories, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't even look at Gaza, right? Forget about Gaza and Hamas. I looked at the moderate Palestinian moderate. Um, West Bank and the Palestinian Authority um, and, and showed what is happening to gay people, right? Because, you know, it's so funny. You look, at, um, you look at the left and you look at their unholy alliance with radical Islam. And on the surface, one wonders, well, what do the two have in common? How could it be that people who purport to support women's rights, gay rights, human rights would ally with people who have a fundamental disagreement with them on this, disagreement is the wrong way of putting it, um, an ex existential difference on how they view those things to their allies on the left. On the surface, it makes no sense, right? But when you start to dig a little bit deeper, you then start to have an understanding of why it is. And I've spent a lot of time uh, and mental energy trying to figure it out, and I, I think I have. What was so that? at the end of the day, I think the, the most powerful and most damaging and most corrosive human emotion that exists is feeling like a victim. Yes. There's yeah. nothing more powerful because if you think about it, it's such a warm, fuzzy feeling because I could say all my problems are not mine. They're yours. You made my problem. So I don't have to change anything about me. You have to change. I'm the victim. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at these left-wing groups, what do they have in common? They're all victims. They all feel like victim. So they look out at the Palestinians and the Muslim Brotherhood and radical Islam, like, you're victims too. So therefore, right. we have this cult of victimhood, this brotherhood of victimhood, which is so powerful that it outweighs even their most ostensibly fundamental beliefs of human rights. That's how powerful this is. Yep. Well, I, I have to say, when I look around, what I see is a bunch of privileged, a bunch of privileged uh, bourgeois kids uh, speaking for, uh, it's all colors, uh, yeah. bougie, bougie kids, privileged, living in privilege, speaking for, taking it upon themselves to be this, you know, the great saviors 
of the people that their families oppress. That's how I see it. It's a it's a hypocrisy yep. to the it's hypocrisy to the millionth degree. But what they have, what they've triangulated in their consciousness is, I am privileged. Therefore, I will speak for the oppressed, and then I get off the guilt trip, and I don't have to do anything. But in order for me to speak for the oppressed, I also have to silence the oppressed and not let them speak for themselves because, you know, they're basically really stupid and otherwise they wouldn't be oppressed. So it's you're so right. So you're so evil. But their self-righteous gene, I call it, they, they agitate their self-righteous gene. And I think self-righteousness is, is the most, uh, that is, that's the one that allows you to go kill. It's worse. It, it's worse than feeling victim. It, to feel like the crusader and yep. the jihadi yep. and yep. the revolutionary, that's far more dangerous than feeling like the victim. The well, victim can become the victor, but those people never can. And that's what they're really afraid of, too, is that the victim, their victim, their family's victims, would become victor and then hold them the savior accountable. And I see that that is happening. Now, right now I heard today through some of my, uh, things that come to me, uh, that Gaza is now in a civil war, which is happening everywhere. Israel's in a civil war. America's in a civil war. Everybody's in a civil war. China's in a civil war. Iran's in a civil war. Uh, everybody's in a civil war, but Gaza's Israel. in a civil war. Because the PLO has just declared war on Hamas in Gaza. Did you know that? Mm -mm. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't hear that they declared war, although clearly they, they, they have had, they've been fighting They're attacking. For, for decades. Um, They're what, attacking Hamas in Gaza right now. The PLO is bad. Good. And they're good. attacking um, Hamas. Good. Good. Let, good. Has Hamas killed the people who were trying to get to the Rafah Gate? Which yep. Egypt finally opened because they are they they are so Egypt is so at fault that they never let those people get out of there. So anyway, they finally were forced to open the gate and send in water and supplies instead of making Israel do all of it. Israel's the only country that sends supplies in there, and so you know it's so sick that Roger Waters is so sick. But anyway, Egypt finally was forced to do something besides just sit there and say no. But Hamas was actually bombing the people who are trying to get to the gate of the Egyptian. You know, that's how evil they are. So it, it's, you know, they're Nazis. So you can see that they uh, would kill Jews with glee. But they're also ISIS. So, of course, they're going to kill Palestinians like they did everywhere. Um They've done that everywhere, Syria, everywhere. They're ISIS. So well, this, is, um, yeah. well, this is their their chant. Not this is not me saying what they say. This is what they say. They, their their chant is we we love death like you love life. This mm -hmm. is this is not me saying what they believe. This is them saying it. Death means nothing to them because ultimately they're going to be rewarded by Allah. So it doesn't matter if they send their children to death because the way they view it is they're going to be rewarded in the afterlife. Um, but the, that's the, a small, but that's, I mean, it's a large number, but it's a small percentage of uh, Muslim because Muslim people, they look, they're, a, a, they feel abhorred by all this too, because that's not in, you know, it, it's not, you know, righteous Muslim people don't go for all that crap. It, it, no, I'm talking feel, about Hamas. I'm talking about Hamas. Oh, yeah. But, you know, they don't do it in the name of Islam. They're not religious people. ISIS isn't really religious. They just hide behind that, you know. They don't really believe in God or anything. Oh, I don't know. They're, I don't know. I think really? I don't, uh, I don't either. Yeah, yeah. They are, they are very much believers. They are very... And so mm. is Hamas. True believers. They are true, they are true believers. Uh, the one thing I'll give them credit for is mm -hmm. they that they are honest. They're not. They're not. They're not 
shitting around when it comes to that. They are, they are, they are real. They are true believers. Really. In Allah. Sure. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Well, I guess we have people on our side that think you you should kill everybody too. Just you know, I don't know. No, I, I mean, look, nobody you, you wants to talk, do they? Nobody wants we, to talk things through. No, look, e- evil is not. There's no monopoly on evil uh, uh, on the on the Islamic side, right? There's enough evil to go around all across the world: white, black, Hispanic, Chinese, uh, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, man. Uh, mm. Evil doesn't 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 congregate around one particular religion or skin color or ethnicity. No, uh, it just, it, no, it, just it sure doesn't. doesn't. No. But I mean, you know, the Torah says that if you have hate, that draws demons to you, mm-hmm. and then they eat your soul. So it's just that people could be able or have the ability to feel hate to that level, you know. That that's astonishing. It's astonishing. I don't even know if they really are like the rest of us. There's something else. There's something different. No, I, I, look. I think they're they're built. I think they're built differently for sure. Um, and that's the scary part because there's no. Here's the thing. There's no reasoning with them, right? So when I yeah. when I spend time with Hamas, and I spend a couple weeks with them, and, and I'm undercover, so I, I can't yeah. really. I can't How tell them get- to leave. What's that? How did you get undercover with? I want to hear about this. How did you get under undercover with Hamas? Um, you know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy, mm-hmm. essentially. Okay. Uh, I have. I don't want to get into the details of how I'm able to yeah. portray who I am to them, but I have an, a, an ability, a way to have to show them my my bona fides okay. uh, that I've created. That I've created. Okay. Um, so they they believed I was who I said I was. Okay. Um, and if if I if if that if I lost that I'd be dead. Yeah. Uh, but it, it 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 holds, and it's it's nerve wracking, right? It's, it's not it's not a comfortable thing to do. It's amazing. How it's like it's just the amount. I don't know how these people. My hats are off. The people are undercover for years at a time. I don't know how they do it. It it, it, just, it plays with your soul and your nerves and your heart. It's just every part of you is tense all the time. Yeah. It's so a great. very it's, and you have to pretend like you're not tense, right? That is the ultimate. I think I'd be a good actor. That is the ultimate acting job: is pretending with bloodthirsty animals you're somebody else, knowing that they know you're. That sounds to- like the writers' room on the Roseanne show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Wait, so you're embedded with Hamas? Forget how you got there. But I, yeah. I want to know why you why you would go to that. Because he's degree. a Because I'm an idiot, and because <laughs> you, know, you know what? You know what's so. Fucking frustrating, Roseanne. You what? spend this time, you're undercover, you do this great video, and you put it out, and then I don't know, maybe three million people saw that that that, that interview, and then the next video after that is a is a cat playing with a ball of string, and that That's asshole gets three million. million views. And you're like, I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I what know. What did you learn with Hamas? Can you? What did you? So do? look, a, a, a lot. And one thing I learned was that there's no there's no reasoning there's no like hey let me explain to you the other position and maybe you misunderstand them and maybe you'll go oh i had an epiphany these dudes aren't so bad they're just like (laughs) that doesn't happen that's not a thing with hamas i learned that okay you one could argue i could have learned that without putting my life in danger fair enough (laughs) um but they also it's like they never said israel or zionist they kept saying jews 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 they hate Jews. And to my Jewish friends on the left who think, hey, man, just give them a piece of land and they're all good. Right. No, they're not all good. Right. As long as you're breathing Jew in Poughkeepsie, Jew in Scarsdale, Jew wherever, uh, you're on their list, brah. Right. That's, give them a little bit of land ain't going ain't gonna to satiate their bloodlust. No. And I think, you know, Again, intellectually, I knew this already. It's just all the stuff that I didn't really learn anything particularly new. Just that it's, it's one thing to know it intellectually and theoretically. It's something else to have somebody look you in the eye and tell you all these things face to face over right. a cup of Turkish coffee. Right. Yeah. But that it would be, it's kind of funny and horrifying that people would think that uh, Nazis are going to be. Friends with Jewish people. Right. 
You know, yes, this, uh, yes, of course, it is. It is a, it is a dumb, uh, naive. Naive isn't even the word. I mean, it's a ludicrous. But the Jewish thing. people will run over there. Hey, I want to be your friend. I'll march with you. Some of the things we can agree on together. We'll, I wish we'll they would all do that. hang out. Yeah, I, I, I have to admit. Okay, I now I just call these people stupid, naive, and I have to admit, I sometimes feel like that way. Like, like I, you know, I had a meeting with the head of the KK in North Carolina, right? And I don't know, a part of me, and not a part of me, like I had this conversation with this guy, right? This is a man, just to give you some context. This guy is so insane. He went to jail for murdering another KKK guy because they got an argument on who's the most racist. <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay, so we set the stage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I go to this guy's ranch in North Carolina, and you know, once you cross over from the main the main road, which is like a one lane road, it's like a you know five minute drive deep into like the woods where and you get a little nervous. And I sat there and I was trying to like, why do you hate black people and Jews? I mean, I don't understand it. Can you? I, they're just the same, and we so we want the same. We want pizza. We you know let's get laid and what's the deal? And he. You know, he looked at me like I was like I like I was such a dummy. Like, how are you trying to make an argument for me not to hate these people? Right? Mm -hmm. It was like, but part of me felt like we're we're in a room together, one on one, right? We're human to human. I can convince him because I'm so full of myself that I convince him to stop hating Jews and black people, whoever, because it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm guilty. I do that too sometimes. I get the impulse, but I know like I've lived this life long enough. I've lived in those shoes to know, yeah, there's no there these this, the evil is evil straight up. You got to eradicate it mm -hmm. straight up. There's not there's no there's no two ways about it. Well, you can pray that it'll dissipate. I think that's a I think that's a real good way of doing it cuz that don't take any blood, you know. You could pray to dissipate it because I, I really think it is up to God. And I do think that God's in control of everything. I think that's why he gave us the Torah. And the Torah tells us that, you know, uh, this is his this is his story. He's the author. And we, we don't, uh, you know, we're just we're just in it. We, we, uh, we can't change it. Um, but Dissipation is a brilliant way of putting it. It really is it, because so I grew up in Los Angeles and when I grew up, you know, in, as a kid in the eighties, um, my, my synagogue and my school, my Jewish school every year, every year, at least once or twice a year would be, um, desecrated, you know, neo-Nazis, broken windows <laughs> every year. It was so common all around LA and the country, it never even made the news, right? Because it was just, it happened. And at the time, all of the attacks on Jews in the eighties were the province of just the hard right, neo-Nazis, skinheads. <laughs> that was a hundred percent who was involved in this kind of shenanigans. And then what happened was the nineties kind of came and then the late nineties, and it kind of just went away and it kind of dissipated. Like it just, the ideals of the KKK and neo-Nazis, which were maybe strong in the 70s and 80s, just went away. It just, like you said, it was dissipated. There was no tolerance for it across the country. They had no power whatsoever. And if there was ever like a synagogue desecrated, it made the news because it was so rare, was so mm -hmm. rare. Because that was what happened. What, then, we, look, life is a cycle, right? And... It around set 10 years ago, it just came back. Now it came back differently. Now you still have the neo Nazis and the KKK, but they're just a small, tiny part of it, right? They're just, they're still, you know, there's, there's no big KKK movement around this country, mm -hmm. but the majority of the attacks that were happening now came from the hard left and mm -hmm. the radical Islamic allies. Mm -hmm. If you look at the school campuses, the, the neo Nazi, the, I'm sorry, the, the, the anti Semitic and neo Nazi crap you see there, that's not by, white supremacists, they're too stupid to get into college. They're not attending college. These are, like you said, the bourgeoisie on the left uh, who, who perpetrate this kind of evil and this kind of hate. It comes from their side now. Well, but they're it, taught to do so in college. That's why the greatest thing you can do for your children is not send them. Correct. You know, uh, thank God I never went. I dropped out in ninth grade. That's why I'm still sane and creative. And uh, successful, I think, and I can think, <laughs> and I can think and create. But um, 
you know, my, uh, I won't go into any family stories. I want to, but I won't. Oh, and I love you. I love you. You have great family stories. You have such a wonderful, you have such a wonderful childhood. <laughs> I did. I, I really, I really did. I was raised on a uh, wonderful Nazi lore. <laughs> uh, survivors of that so that's really deeply in, embedded in me you know and uh maybe you know, it prepared so you I for today it. i see it sometimes i'm like god why'd you give me these eyes me and my sister both say why do i have to see this when nobody else is seeing it but i was like i guess i'm supposed to or something but i do see it because i saw it so once yeah. you see you can't unsee you know and uh it's just horrifying but yeah, I, li I like that you said the Jews are the canary in the coal mine, and that is exactly true because what starts with the Jews, it never ends with the Jews. It, it ends with the destruction of the entire country as witnessed Germany and all of Europe. So it never just ends with the Jews. And people have to see that. Uh, the Jews are, uh, you know, like every other minority group, including Palestinians, and, you know, there's just a certain... Uh, it seems that we have the enemy within all, all people have an enemy within that enriches itself by trading in the lives of its own people. That's how you get successful in so many ways in politics under a fourth Reich, you turn in your own and you get rewarded. And that that's, you know, the enemy w within. And I know that, you know, uh, Israel is full of those, Israel is full of people who hate uh, the Jewish state. And I don't even know why they live there. But, you know, it's like America is full of people who hate the Constitution and they hate America. You know, it, it's just the way things are right now. But I think it is so that people are forced to choose which things they stand for, which values they want to claim, and then live or die by them. I think that we're in that age. Yeah, I mean, look, the this this attack it came at a very interesting time, right? It came on our holiest day. Yeah, I don't, I don't mean that. I mean, I mean, oh. the it came at a time where Israel Israelis were at each other's throats. Right. It came at a time where the country was ripping itself apart, uh, both when it comes to religious and secular, right and left. It was a very difficult time for anybody who loves the state of Israel to watch. Jews, fellow Jews, at each other's throats in a way that was so horrific. And it's interesting to see how, you know, look, Jews were able to put all that aside in, a, in an instant and, and come together uh, under horrific circumstance to fight together, to unite together, to cry together. Um, and I, I would like to think that if there's any con positive that comes from something so horrific and terrible is that Jews after this will look at each other and say, you know, maybe the stuff, stuff we're fighting with were such such small, such small, tiny little insignificant things, you know? What blew my important. mind is to see the, the Christian soldiers in, in the IDF. Uh, that was very moving to me. And there are... Um, Kurdish soldiers in the IDF and, you know, some Muslim soldiers too. They're, they're and right. I was like, wow, that is a great gathering of uh, all the tribes there to fight for freedom, to not want to live under a caliphate. And uh, that that is what Israel stands for above all else, even through, you know, the uh, many, you know, deep state think problems they have like we do here in America. And so, you know, uh, I think everything eventually and ultimately works for the betterment and the good, you know, uh, even when it's horrific. And uh, that's the lesson of history for the Jewish people, I think, and for everybody. You are wise and sage, the great Roseanne Barr. <laughs> I'm an old old uh, Jewish lady that likes to stick my nose in everybody's business. And, you know, I mean, I have traveled the world sticking my nose in everybody's business to figure out why are things so shitty when they could be so great. 
And when I was in Israel, you know, one thing I always made a point to pray with Muslim and Christian women together for, you know, uh, the elevation of our intelligence that we could solve the problems of humanity together because there's no reason we can't. And then we would all dance together too, which is a wonderful thing where we express joy in the physical world together, which is a real celebration of the creator and, uh, and seeing the, uh, effect that causes in the world. And so, you know, I'm just, uh, thinking of that memory, those memories and trying to access it. We're going to get smarter than all this evil shit. That's so obsolete. Uh, we have a whole new way of doing things and, uh, and I think we're going to go to it. I think we're going to go to where we start seeing war and all this death as obsolete and get smarter. We, we can get, we can get smarter. And a lot of us already are. And, uh, I, I just pray that the people who are in those positions of power, if, if they are Jewish and they have a Jewish soul, maybe that was, maybe it woke them up too. And they would uh, come back to the human beings and all those other people too, if they have a soul, they come back to the human beings because the human beings don't want bloodshed, wo bloodshed, and bloodshed, war and hatred. The human beings want a nice place to raise their kids and their grandkids. And, uh, you know, cause they're intelligent and they, they don't want a big old pyramid with just a few at the top at the expense of the many intelligent tells us that. And so, uh, the greatest weapon of all that, Ami, why I admire you and I'm so appreciative for you being here today, is the greatest weapon against that kind of insane power is laughter and to laughing it to scorn, which you do very, very well. And, uh, you know, I, I see you as a great warrior against bullshit, right? And that's what it is all about. I don't it's tolerate like, bullshit. Ask my kids. Hmm. I'm, cu so, but I'm curious. Um, what do you think of that mural of you in Machane Yehuda? Oh my God, that was so amazing. I was there, you know, and I had uh, had given a speech there about Jewish history and about the Nakba of one million Jews. And um, uh, so, so they said, oh, we have a surprise for you. And I said, okay. And they said, we're going the sh to the Shuk, which I always love to go to because I just eat my way from one end to the other. <laughs> it's so such good food. It doesn't taste like no food here in the U.S., huh? It's like a real tomato that's really not good. a Monsanto tomato, but it tastes like a tomato. Good bars, so, too. Oh, yeah. And music, everything. So we're going down there, and I'm like, what's my surprise? They got me a cake. We turned over the street and I'm like, Oh, they're gonna, they got me a chocolate cake. So, and I turned there and there it was on the, my portrait. And it just was astounding. I could not believe it. I was just astounded. And I was so honored and humbled. And I, I was, God, that, I felt like that was my, uh, what do you call it? That we're all supposed to leave behind our, our uh, legend. Yeah. Right. There it is right there. And thank you. Thank you, everybody. Well, your legacy is bigger than that, but that's a, it's a nice, it's a nice token. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I'm like, F it, I'm going to fly over there to Israel and run for prime minister because I'm as smart as uh, Golda. And, um, you know, I smoke as much as she did. She was <laughs> so smart because she smoked, I think. I want to say... Uh Ami, first of all, your YouTube channel, which I think is one of the greatest. I can't believe that the the Hamas didn't look at you and go, this guy's a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I was thinking. How did you get to KKK member's house with that face? That's what I want. <laughs> Thank uh, God people are dumber than you think. <laughs> uh, you can check him out at youtube.com forward slash at Ami Horowitz, A M I H O R O W I T Z. And I got to say, I got to speak for 10 seconds. Ami, you are responsible, in my opinion, for two of the greatest Absolutely, videos I agree. that have I ever agree. existed on the internet. One, okay, I'm curious which ones those are. The Berkeley students react to the ISIS flag when you <laughs> did the ISIS flag and the Israeli flag. I, everyone, check it out. 
And to me, it's off topic from Israel, but the greatest video of all time, my mom can attest, I talk about it probably once a day. And that was, is voter ID racist? I don't know what it's titled, but you had all the white libs talking about how black people were too poor and too dumb to get uh, IDs at the DMV. And then you went and interviewed black people and they're like, yeah, the DMV is right down the street. The greatest video, in my opinion, of a racist all. liberal. You know what's so, you know what's so what funny? What we the show with, so I have when to say, make, when you make those show. videos, like I, that particular video, I was like, it was okay, it was fine. And I, I was like, I didn't think much of it. And then it's just like you just don't know. I think that thing's well over a hundred million views. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, no, well they're huge. And. It, what it did was, and I was like, what? I was like, I thought it was an okay video. I didn't think it was one of my one of my greats. But and some of the great videos, you, you you're like, this is my greatest video. No, don't get you what know, don't is get your great, What do you think is your greatest video? I did a video which I loved, where I went to Ireland um, with hidden cameras, and I was I was I pretended. So I went to like different likes, like a, like a owner of, um, of a chain of bookshops, uh, a department store. I went to the, and all of them had one thing in common. They were all following BDS. They wouldn't buy any Israeli products. Mm -hmm. So I had hidden cameras and I went into like the bookstore. I was like, yeah, I'm selling these like leather handmade diaries from North, uh, North Korea. I represent North Korea. He goes, why are they so cheap? I go, well, we make them with slave labor so we can afford you. <laughs> And he goes, that's great. That's great. Like, you know, <laughs> I kid you not. And then I go to like, I go to like this, this department store, this, this supermarket. I'm selling saffron from, um, from uh, Iran. And I go, I know you guys care about the environment. I go, this, these have zero carbon footprint because all of our political prisoners, we give them no water or heat, electricity. So there's no, they go, oh, that's what's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I thought it was funny. I don't know. It didn't, but, I, you know, I'll say this, that the, the you were talking about before, um, if we have a second. Of course. Yeah. We, no, we can talk forever. You were talking about it. it it's so true. And this video, voter ID video really connects to what you were talking about, how this idea of these white middle upper class kids speaking for black people, mm -hmm. it actually was I created for me a, a bit of a cottage industry. Now about a third of my videos are videos where I go talk to white leftists about like one of my, again, one of my favorite videos was I asked them about why is there higher black obesity? Uh, and they said, the, you can't, if I had a writer's room of people <laughs> writing their answers, yeah. I could not have come up with they came, what they came up with. What did they say? Oh, boy. So white, so black people, they, there's so much racism, they stress eat. That they have to eat to cope stress with the eat. racism. This is literally what they told me. Okay. <laughs> Or they said, well, black people don't understand what food is good for them or bad for them. This is what these people are telling me on camera. No, and then, God. of course, I go to the black community and I go, why is there higher black obesity? They go, because we eat like shit. <laughs> <laughs> because we, and they said, look, we didn't know, but we have to make choices. We make poor choices. And, you know, we make poor choices. We have to eat. Poor I mean, I've, they said the things that you and I would say with common sense, but these white assholes, these white leftist assholes know better. They know better than those dumb black people who don't know, could, can't think for themselves. We need to tell them what's good for them. It's sick. Yeah. It's, a, it's the most insidious it's type of racism. They're the most it racist is. people I've ever seen since. I mean, they I wasn't are. alive in the forties, but since the Nazis, from my understanding of history, the American leftists today, is the most racist, in my opinion, since absolutely. The Nazis. Well, they're the I most fascist too. Yeah, they really well, they're are. That's why we left the Democrats. That's why we left, Ma. We saw it, and we're like, "Holy shit! These people don't speak for me. These people are racist assholes. I don't want to be it. Uh, I don't want to hang out with these people." That's why we walked away, quote unquote. And yet, we're the ones that are constantly. Well, you are not me, but you are constantly throwing the racist. I'm a, I'm a racist anti-Semite. Yeah, and Holocaust a, denier. Uh, and, huh? <laughs> and a Holocaust denier, don't forget. Oh, yeah, Holocaust denier. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I, I remember, I think I called, I called you after that, right? Yeah. The sick, sick controversy. Yeah, I want to say one thing. It was great. Quick, if I can. I was a, a Democrat and a leftist on me for a long, long time. My mother took me to Israel uh, to get me a Jewish wife. That was her plan. I didn't know it at the time. 
but I was actually able to. Tour. I said, get over there to that wall and pray for a decent Jewish wife right now. <laughs> she, did. she did. But what I want to say is I didn't know as most American leftists and most American people don't. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because if you go on social media right now, there's debates uh, between the alt-right and the left, which is who's the bigger Jew hater. And one yeah. thing that people don't know, which I really would like us to talk about, is that today, if you the three of us were to go to Jerusalem to pray, there are certain spots we cannot go in without Under armed international guards. international law. Because the people that, I'm, I'm going to be very, very smart about how I say this, but there are certain sections within Jerusalem that you, the three of us cannot go and pray at without armed guards in certain times of the day. So one of the things people don't know because American leftists are so into that victim mentality that you explained on me brilliantly is that if Israel is an apartheid state, if there is, if we're as bad and Jews are as bad as everyone says, why can't we pray at our holiest site within the city of Jerusalem? And it's one thing that I never see talked about. And I think American leftists, if they understood that if we were to go pray at the rock where Abraham was told, kill your son by God, which is in all the Judeo-Christian books, we could not do it right now without. Right. And, and by the way, it's not, you can't, not that you can't pray, one small correction, not that you can't, you can't pray unless you have armed guards. You can't pray no matter what. You could bring all oh. the armed guards you want. Oh, I thought you there were certain times of the day you I'll could. I'll tell you what, though. I'll tell you. Well, then, I mean, it's, it, well, hold on. So you can't pray at all at, no. at Al Aqsa Mosque. No, as well. no. You and that's in Jerusalem. Or the Dome of the Rock. So that's but in I'll Jerusalem tell you what. where Jews. Hold on. This is, the Jews, this is the spot. The whole like you, you mentioned all the different things. This is the spot where Abraham uh, was going to kill uh, his son. This is the spot where Jacob had his dream. This is the spot of the Holy of Holies. Of the of the Beit Hamikdash, the Holy yeah. Temple was on and, this spot, and, and it was a spot it? where 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 they say that that Muhammad ascended to to heaven. This who is has control of that right now? The Waqf, the Waqf, the the, Jordan. the yeah. yeah, the King of Jordan. So in the Israel, Waqf. so people in America understand, in Israel, Jews today cannot pray at their holiest site at all, Correct. Correct. and we're and yet we are now, in a hard yeah, place. Shut up. This Let is important. This. We are yeah, an apartheid state important. according to them. <laughs> but, <laughs> right? shut up both of you. Listen up. But I went directly there to the Dome of the Rock. And by God, I prayed my ass off. I love it. I prayed all day, you know. Then I went down to the Al-Aqsa Mosque there. Me and my mom, we prayed all day there too. You know what? Nobody has to know when you're praying. Don't politicize prayer. That's what it's really about, all their bullshit. You can pray wherever you want. You just don't, you don't make a big ritual of it. So who needs that? Anyway. Yeah, you don't, you don't put your talis and your tefillin and your shekel yeah. with, the, with, the, with the mezuzah. And the, that's, you know, for, that's for show. That's for show. That isn't for God and you. I was praying there all day. You, I got hundreds of pictures of me and my mom walking around praying all day there. You know, it's about what is it, ego, or are you asking, or are you are trying to connect with God? Well, those that's are two different point. things, and they shouldn't be. But it's you know, let's let's politicize everything. Let's politicize mental illness. Let's politicize fat. Let's politicize everything. But you know, what? it's all bullshit. You can pray wherever you want, and you can connect to God whenever you want. You don't need. You don't need an intercessor. You don't need nothing. You don't have to you, make a big you need, Yeah, you just need to pray. Well, I agree, and that's a great point. I just think that- I don't like all that politics where they do that with, that's a lot of that Jewish state crap. No, but what I'm saying I want, is- I want to redefine what is a Jewish state. I've been writing about that for 25 years. New York. What, what New York. would the proper Jewish state, that's a real <laughs> Jewish state, what will that look like? Well, for one thing, it wouldn't be under the control of the CIA and the and the anti-Semites in the American government. I'll tell you that much. That would be better. It wouldn't be living in fear of uh, getting bombed out by Iran either. That's a good point. I just think it's important to note that American leftists see 
Palestinians as a victim and Israel as a white oppressor. And I just, the reason I brought that up is that it's not black and white on that side either. And it's something that nobody talks about. In fact, today was the first time I bet you most people listening to this podcast have ever heard. Oh yeah. I talk about it all the time though. I know you do, but you haven't talked about it on this podcast. And I, I just want to no, get that out. Like it's you're, you're, I'm sitting here told that as far as an American leftist believe, they believe everyone in Israel is white and MAGA mm -hmm. and, and keeping the brown Palestinians under their boot. That's what they think. And it's not. Yeah. Well, this is why Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg specific. This is, this yes. goes. Oh my God. Don't get me started on that. goddamn. But it was, a, it's a, it's a look, it's a move. It's a move. And the move is we, we have to portray Jew and anybody who knows Jews understand Jews are probably the most multicultural religion oh, in wow. the world. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And and when she said when Whoopi Goldberg said, for those who don't remember, she said, well, that that was a problem between y'all white people. Right. Yes. That's, that was a dispute you guys had when they were putting when they were putting our family in ovens. That was a dispute among y'all white people. Now, forget about how disgusting it was in general to just wave off the Holocaust. Forget that for a second, if you can. He didn't it's, get fired. No. Oh, no, no. You get fired or 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 uh, what's her name gets fired from the talk because she defends uh, somebody who's not a racist. Right. Correct. Um, but she still has her job. But the move is that if we have to portray all Jews as white people, because then it takes off the table Thank the you. idea that they can also be victims and oppressors of part of the intersectional coalition of right. black people and gay yeah. people, all the things that well, Jews are hides, it, people. It Definitely. hides black anti-Semitism. That's the whole point of it. I don't. Yeah. I mean, and that point. is uh, in every culture in America, every group, they are their group, the black Americans, their anti-Semitism is off the chain mm -hmm. and they feel entitled to it because they're being used by Nazis. They're, you know, they're, they're in the lemming programming and they're being right, used too, by the fourth Reich. Everyone has a claim to anti-Semitism right now. You have it on the, on the right, on the left. It's every group. In America, is, she, look, she has a point. There, there is, I mean, we're all being honest here. I mean, look, there is a yeah. problem with anti-Semitism in the black community. I, I was That's recently true. on uh, this called Black Information Network. It's a very large radio syndicator of black uh, radio. I think it's the largest radio syndicator in the in the ur in the urban uh, space. And um, they're they're left, and they had me on for an hour to talk about black anti-Semitism. So I've done a couple of videos on it. Good. And he said, look, there, there is, there's no question. Not, now, again, the vast majority of black people are not anti-Semitic. But right. there, when you looked, when you were looking at the member, I'm sure you, you guys, I know, remember, but I don't know, but the rest of the audience, a couple of years ago, there was a spate in Mark particularly in New York of Jews being attacked and beaten on the streets. It was all black people. Yeah. And the reason, and I did a video on that, right? And again, I do a lot of videos about race because it's important to me and I have a large black following and I, I it, the racism of the left is one of the most despicable things I see, but I call as I see it. And there was, there was and is a problem. And you see it particularly among black celebrities, right? Oh yeah, because they can't work unless they say it. How that, they, that is, they have to say it. How a guy like Ice Cube gets a pass and is still vetted and still gets jobs. He is the most violent piece of shit anti-Semite I have heard. The stuff he has tweeted out and pushed out is vile, vile. Yet he still ha he still is a working actor and celebrity in Hollywood. And you can go across the board. He has to say it. He has to say it. If he didn't say it, he wouldn't work. It's and true. The the Jew run media is not the Zionist Jew run media. It's the leftist yeah. Jew if, run if media. It, yeah, where, if, where's my, if the Jews run it all, where's, where's my show, man? I'm, I, yeah. I guess, I'm, I'm not right. the only people fired were me and, uh, right. Oh, what's her name? She's Jewish too from yeah. the talk. I don't There's want to keep her name. Fired. Sharon Os Sharon Os yeah. Yes. For something yeah, so, she, she, something so, all it's she did was, all, was all in town. Who, it's co-intel. That's what we need to talk that, about. It's, it's co-intel pro-lemming program. 
They have to say it because they have to use the black, you know, because Jews and blacks used to be a block and, you know, they used to be a voting block, you know, for liberal causes, which meant at the time building a middle class. But I don't mean that no more. They had to kill that because, you know, the owners of the world, they didn't want that big block that Mm -hmm. led to a middle class for everybody. They hate the middle class. They don't want to have to share nothing. They just want them and the bunch of slaves. So, um, you know, they had to slice that off. And it was all MK Ultra mind control. And it still is. And mm-hmm. black people are under heavy, heavy duty um, MK Ultra mind control. And so are the Jews, too, in Hollywood. They all, out, all have to say that shit. They have to say the shit they're saying. Or yes. they won't work. Because, right. you know, well, you know CAA, it works for the CIA. You know, the biggest, like, the biggest uh, talent agency is a mouthpiece for the CIA. And who is the CIA? Private contractors. A lot of them, they ain't even Americans. A lot of them are Chinese. Is that why the CIA, of- CIA will represent me? Yes. Because- yeah. For real. That ex- that ex- that ex- yeah. Yeah. But look. I th- I think this uh this mind control whatever it is it's not, it, ain't, it ain't working so well anymore because let me tell you I think in this next election you're going to see a, an erosion in the black support for Democrats across the happened. well we saw that in 2020 I want to tell you this that's what happened in 2020 and why they had to get busy printing up all them fake ballots because mm-hmm. they were scared shitless that the blacks got off their fant- plantation and voted Trump and they did. So that's why they had to do what they did in that election. And it'll all be shown, too. Believe me, it'll all come out. You're going to see a much bigger, I predict, a much bigger move from the black from the black vote moving toward the Republican. Yeah, the racist, the racist, vile Donald Trump got more of the black vote than any Republican in recent memory, right? Yeah, and by the way, the, the anti-Hispanic uh, Donald Trump got more of the Hispanic vote. I think a third of the Hispanic vote went to Donald Trump. And I think you're like, seeing a much bigger Cuban turn. Too. Yeah. Because oh, well, Cuban, 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 Cuban are always the populist. They're the best. I People are seeing the bu- through the bullshit now. They're seeing through the bullshit that comes across 24-7 on the media. They're seeing through it. It's like a miracle of God that people are getting the discernment to see, hey, I can decode this bullshit and it just means basically the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. That's all it's about. It's a class war and they use all their fancy, uh, you know, bullshit all trotted out in the new dress. That's all the it is. Black is from the poor to give to the rich. They see, th- look, you, you're telling me, I promise you this had a, a when, 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 when Joe Biden gets up, sits on, on stands up and he goes, uh, voter ID laws is Jim Crow. And then black people go, Dude, do you know what Jim Crow was? I don't. Th- maybe you need a history lesson on what fucking Jim Crow was. For you to stand right. up voted there. for it. The Democrats voted for it. Of yeah. course they did. All the Dixie Democrats voted for it. Um, but blacks were looking at each other, going, does "This cracker know what he's talking about." When it comes to Jim Crow. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about yeah. black people not being able to sit in a restaurant or drink from a water fountain. Fuck you, saying that a voter ID is the same thing as that. That's a disgusting compare, and that was not unnoticed by the black community. For him not to denude the power of Jim Crow, and when the and when the left has taken away all, the left has taken away the word racism. It has no power anymore whatsoever. No, I don't mean nothing. It means nothing. I think black people say, "Wait a second, why are you taking that power away? Racism, a racist, is a powerful." Thing to put on somebody, and you've taken it away from us. And now there's when you when everyone is racist, no one is racist, and that's a big right. fu to the black community. And they get it; they understand what's going on. Yeah. Well, what I thought was great is what what they're doing to Trump just shows what the black community and all minority and poor white people have known for a million years that the department that the justice, like Paul Mooney said. You go down there looking for justice, that's what you find, just us. He's a black comic. But uh, what they're doing to Trump, they've been doing to the minority groups for 100 years, trumping up charges. Trumping up, is, I just thought of that. But I, 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 saw what you did there. I saw what he did there. I didn't do it on purpose, but it was a good mistake. <laughs> uh, 
that you know they use trumped up charges and put people away for their lives when they're innocent and they know that because it happened in, on every street yeah how many black men are in prison uh, for something that like say hunter biden gets away all of them get away with everybody From the on 1994 the left, crime bill everybody. and guess who wrote that guess who wrote joe that? biden right and kamala harris in california would put record number yeah. of black people in prison those, she those put two parents are, in jail because their kids yeah. were truant she hit black, black parents ethics. yeah that's who so, i mean people are seeing and i felt like in 2020 mm -hmm. that you know black people saved america by voting trump but they took it away from all of us but you know people are smarter than they think they are and uh you know that goes for in israel too and it goes for democracies that guarantee uh, equal rights to all people and to women mostly and those those are two countries that do so and uh, that are not going to fall under the boot under the jack boot of the nazi world order that that fucking shit is gone and just keep praying it away and it will dissipate because there's nothing stronger than getting your soul plugged into the creator um, just go to the wall and plug it in. That that's our power. Don't forget that. Any final words on me? This was fun. I had a good right? time. Yeah. yeah, it's fun having you. Yeah. You're you're a great this is you're a half interview ever given. Yeah. Oh, you're so sweet. And we well, I love show. you. We've been waiting a long time to get you on and talk to you. And uh, you know. Pray for the pre peace of Jerusalem. I will every day, every day. God bless you. Thank you. God Jake. bless you. Pleasure. Mom, you know, you and I have been talking about a product that is probably, I said it last time we did this, probably the most important thing outside of food and water you can get. And that's, I think it is. So tell the people what this is. Well, it's a satellite phone which That's will right. come in really handy if they shut down the grid or, you know, God forbid anything like that happens and your cell phone doesn't work and you can't get in touch with your family or, you know, the, po the police or any, any first responders or anything, God forbid that would happen. It yeah. keeps you connected to uh, all the rest of the world. So you're not isolated and alone and afraid. It's like your power source to survival. And it's pretty cool too, because one of the things people don't ever talk about with cell phones is that a cell phone coverage at best covers about 7% of the planet. It's only 7% of the globe where your phone will work, but a yeah. satellite phone will work virtually anywhere. I mean, anywhere. The ocean, it just connects a satellite and it's good. This one's good to go. I can make a call right now, but, um, you know, one call for pizza. Yeah, I shouldn't order pizza from the sat phone. Well, that's the other thing, Ma. You can cover up your mass pizza ordering because <laughs> these are encrypted. They can't be tracked and they can't be spied on. So, yeah, of course, if the grid goes down or, God forbid, something horrible happens, this will get you to safety and get your family to safety. But more importantly, this is not trackable and it is encrypted. So these are safe, private conversations. So you could order 40 pizzas a day and not make TMZ. I mean, it really is a godsend and it's so incredible that we would have that tool for us in what yeah. is like difficult and horrifying and terrorizing times. This is something that everybody should have that has a family and, uh, you know, knows what's going on and is at all informed about what, what, uh, terrible times we're living in. Right. Absolutely. And it's one thing you and I talk about a lot, you know, we do a podcast there is sponsorships, but you know, we turn down a lot of sponsorships that are selling bullshit. Like we're, we're, we're in the fourth turning. It's we're, we're in a very dangerous time. If we're going to push a product, it's something that we use and something we believe in. We do have this, this is a working phone. We keep this in our car. We have members of our family with them. We can connect anytime. And, um, you know, we wouldn't push it if we didn't think it's important. That's all I want to say. Yeah. It's really good. Cause in Hawaii, you don't get, uh, cell service in most of the parts of the big island. So, you know, it's very helpful in case like even, even small things, like if you get a flat tire, it yeah. comes in handy for that kind of thing, not just your pizza deliveries, but you know, for everyday 
emergencies, which God forbid should befall you, but even up to huge emergencies like what happened in Lahaina. Yeah. Everybody should have one. Everybody should have one. That's my advice to everybody. Absolutely. I mean, we know what happened when people couldn't connect to their family or emergency services, and it's uh, it's terrifying to think about. So I'm going to read a couple of things, Ma, so you don't have to. Um, but if I'll you go to so. – what's that? I'll listen. Yeah. So for people, that if you're interested in this product, which you should be, go to SAT, that's S-A-T, SAT123.com, or call the number 855-980-5830. It's important to know that even though it is a satellite phone and, and this great tool, it does work similar to a cell phone and that you have to sign on, um, you know, for a contract for a year or whatever. And they have all sorts of deals. So this is one thing you need to know. If you get one phone with 100 minutes included, that's about $120 a month for a two year commitment. Um, but if you add phones, it goes down from there. It only is $89.95. So you can set up your family in a more cost effective way. Now it's not cheap, but it is important. And I would venture to say you might as well just, this is my opinion, cancel your cell phone service. Uh, if you, if you're squeezed in Biden's economy and just go straight to satellite phone, it's a similar contract works the same way. Mm -hmm. It'll work wherever you yeah. are. Um, and then, you know, keep your, your cell phone for pictures and videos. I do, I do think they should come out with these that'll take video and, and photo. I know that they're working on it. They might already have it. They have texting devices. You can find They have generators on this website. It's great. But, um, just keep in mind that it's a little bit of a commitment, but an important commitment and, uh, that's it. Satellite one, two, th I'm sorry, sat one, two, three.com or eight, five, five, nine, eight, zero, five, eight, three, zero. Well, I'm glad we could tell people about it because I think it's going to be very important and very necessary. So I agree. All right. Do you want do you want cheese or pepperoni? Ah, uh -huh, <laughs> cheese. So cheesy.